So what I'd like to show you here today is a radio frequency oscillator that I've done up on a breadboard. It uses a simple 2N3904, works at about 9 megahertz or so in this configuration. And I'm going to show you that uh, we can make it work in such a way that it's receivable on the FM band. Now the FM band's up at 88 to 108 megahertz, but we're at about 91 megahertz here um, from this little 2N3904. And the reason for that is because we're overdriving it a little bit and we're distorting that waveform. So distortion isn't always a bad thing. In this particular case we're doing it on purpose. And I'll show you the waveform on the oscilloscope and then we'll hook it up to the spectrum analyzer and take a peek at it there too. And I'll go over a few things as to why we want this to do the things that it's doing. So here's a look at our waveform that's coming out of the uh, the emitter of the 2N3904. You can see it doesn't look a lot like a sine wave, which is exactly what we want. If we had a pure sine wave, we wouldn't have harmonics. And you can see the frequency that the, the base frequency that the uh, oscillator is working at, 9.1 megahertz here. So if we had a really pure sine wave, we wouldn't have any harmonics. There wouldn't be anything to listen to on the FM radio. But because this is so ugly and distorted in, in a sense, it puts out a lot of junk every 9.107 plus megahertz. So uh, that's why we could listen to it up at 91, approximately 91 megs, because we were listening to the 10th harmonic of this junky waveform. One thing I'd also like to have a look at is as you watch the frequency there, if I adjust the voltage on this potentiometer here, I can make the frequency of the oscillator move. You can see there's 9.1, there's going up a little bit more, and I, I can make it go back down again. So this is a slightly voltage controlled oscillator in effect. That's not what its uh, specific function is, is to be voltage controlled over a very wide range. But if we put a small amount of uh, voltage into this circuitry here, and I'll show you on the circuit on the schematic diagram how we do that, we can get the frequency of this to move back and forth a tiny bit. In other words, we can modulate what the frequency is, or FM radio. We can frequency modulate it by putting a small control voltage into there, and it will change the frequency of our oscillator back and forth. So let's go have a look on the spectrum analyzer. So on the spectrum analyzer here, we can see our primary frequency, uh, 9.2 megahertz approximately. Uh, our scan starts at 5 megahertz and goes up to 110 here, just below the top end of the uh, FM band, which ends at 108. But I'm going to let the machine find the peaks for us, so we're going to head over till we get to our approximately 91, 92 megahertz. And there we see 91.8 megahertz, so we are on the 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 9th, 10th. It is the 10th harmonic right here. And these are deliberately created by us. If we had a very nice, clean um, sine wave, of course, like many times you want, you wouldn't have all these spikes of all these other frequencies, all these multiples of the primary carrier here, primary frequency. So uh, if, uh, if we wanted to use this for some reason, we may want to uh, at times uh, make an oscillator that does exactly this because we want higher frequencies that are difficult to, sometimes difficult to create at the very high frequency. So we let the oscillator itself or some other kind of circuit, sometimes multipliers and things, we let them create those frequencies for us. And then we pick them off and we filter them out. We filter out the stuff that we don't want and we keep the ones that we do. So in the front of that little radio um, that we were listening to this carrier with, there's a filter there that, of course, uh, filtered out everything else that's on here. And it's narrow compared to this thing, so it only tuned that, this frequency in for us and it gave us that tone that we could hear. So now for a bit of a discussion about the circuit itself. This is the, uh, this is the circuit as built. So we saw it working, so this actually works. Uh, it'd be nice if uh, somebody tried this uh, on their own workbench and tried to duplicate this and let, you know, let me know in the comments what you get. It'd be interesting. So what we see here is basically an amplifier. Here's our amp, of course, the, the transistor and our uh, four biasing uh, resistors here. And this portion of the circuit is the, uh, the tank circuits down here. So this is our tank circuit. 
and uh, as you see by the dashed red line, this is mod. This is the por portion that gives us the modulation that uh, is optional. If you just want to simply make a uh, an oscillator, you don't need to do any of these things. You don't have to add any of those. This is basically what you would get, what you what you would want to have, and. Um, this here is the inductor and a, a bypass capacitor so that the, uh, the DC from here doesn't get shorted through the coils of wire here to ground. So we had to put a, uh, I had to put a fairly large capacitor in there to isolate this DC wise. Uh, AC wise at the 9.2 kilohertz, this is a short. So that gives us our circulating uh, tank circuit right here. Uh, the the Inductor here in the capacitor could be replaced by a, a crystal. This is a 17.4 megahertz crystal and this is what I very first started out with in this circuit and with this uh, here we saw 9 point uh, some megahertz 9.2 and nothing else had really changed so I, it was really nice with the coal pits that at least I, I found a number of times is quite a range in here of what you could put in the tank circuit and this thing will still oscillate without having to fiddle around with all these other things. So 17.4 megs or 9.2 and it still worked just fine. Uh, some other points would be I uh, used uh, common components as common as I could uh, find basically so that hopefully somebody could duplicate this. And the transistor is just a basic general purpose uh, NPN with uh, uh, FT or uh, gain bandwidth product of around 250 million or 250 megahertz, 300 megahertz for some. Depends on who makes them and when they were made, etc. But that's the basic idea there. Um, the the Vericap, which uh, I imagine probably everybody doesn't have, and this is what provides that very small amount of changing capacitance that is coupled across this tank circuit. So this tank circuit has its capacitance and everything. And then we go and we couple a tiny bit more across it and the incoming voltage, the incoming audio voltage is fed through a, uh, a radio frequency choke and that incoming voltage goes across and varies the capacitance of this diode. All diodes have a certain amount of capacitance in them and if you reverse bias them a little bit and, and make that go more or less reverse biased by having an AC or an audio tone on it that changes that capacitance in this and that makes the frequency change inside of here because it's hooked directly right up across it. So uh, I also biased the uh, 1N4001 slightly with uh, this this pot. So that's the pot over here. It, it gives it, notice that this is hooked in backwards or what you think is backwards and that gives a bit of uh, DC down into this guy to uh, bias it someplace in the middle so that the uh, that the audio works on this. This RFC, the radio, uh, radio frequency choke, that's the um, inductor that I was uh, uh, ding dinging with the um, or doing the ringing circuit with. That's this little guy right here. So I measured that inductor and had came up with 2.56 microhenries. That's not really critical. What is, what is critical is that this blocks the RF from going out this way, yet allows the, the uh, low, low audio tones to come in this way. So that's why that is there. So that's, that's the basics of this circuit. 12 volts, of course, uh, DC to power this thing. Uh, you'd get a lot more uh, deviation on your FM if you did use a Vericap or a Veractor. If you go to Wikipedia, they've got a nice little article on Vericap. That's a, not a bad place to start. And otherwise, uh, yeah, it was kind of a fun little project to do. It's always neat when you can do some RF work on a, what you would normally not consider as an RF board, which is the, uh, the breadboards. Um, these will go quite high in frequency and on a breadboard. Quite surprising how far you actually can go if you go and look up the, uh, the world record. is 25 gigahertz through, uh, on a breadboard. So this is nothing. This is pretty uh, pretty straightforward and kind of neat that you can get FM out of uh, just such a simple thing and really only one active component pretty much.